One person was a peer of Brahman Birya. His name was Malana Abdul Wahid, who during 1903 corresponded through letters with the Promised Messiah and asked many questions to him. The Promised Messiah answered his questions and to the good fortune of the future generations of Ahmadis of Bengal and elsewhere, he preserved those questions and answers in his book, Brahin Ahmadiyya, Volume 5. Mulana Abdul Wahid's research and investigations on the truth of the Promised Messiah continued even after the death of the Promised Messiah in 1908. Towards the end of 1911, Mulana Abdul Wahid <coughs> decided to go to Qadian and see for himself how the lives of the disciples of the Promised Messiah were transformed after taking bait. Since he himself was a prominent scholar and studied in the madrasa of Mulana Abdul Hay Lokani, he thought of meeting and exchanging ideas with some of the India's learned uh, scholars of Islam on his journey to Qadian. On his, on his way, he met Mulana Abdul Reza Khan Berelvi, uh, Mulana Shibli Nomani, and Mulana Abdullah Tonki. None of them could put forth any valid, arg valid arguments against the reasoning and claim of the Promised Messiah Islam. Rather, he found them deceptive and holding grudges not based on taqwa or fear of God. Frustrated with them, he reached Patala, the last railway station before Qadian, and there he met Mulvi Muhammad Hussein Batali, the famous Ali Hadith stalwart. After some failed arguments, Mulvi Batali tried to persuade Mulvi Abdul Wahid Sahib not to go to Qadian because whatever Majza was, now that he is dead, there is no use going there. But with profound wisdom and surely a reflection of the state of, of his mind, Mulana Abdul Wahid replied that if a fire had been lighted there, he would surely be able to find its remain in the form of ashes. After reaching Qadian, he went straight to meet Hazrat Hakim Mulvi Nuruddin Khalifa the Masih the First, Anhu, who was at that time taking a Darsal Quran session. He was stunned by the new insight and brilliant explanations of the Holy Quran put forward by Khalifa the Masih the First. After attending these sessions for a few days, he found that all his personal vanity and his own depth of knowledge stood nowhere compared to this treasure of knowledge. He had to acknowledge that this knowledge could not have come out of simple human endeavor. Rather, it must have descended from above through revelation. He finally took bath at the hands of Hazrat Khalifa the Masih the First, in December 1912, and came back to Bengal. He was given the authority to take bath, and so the people of Bengal could come and take bath at his hands. He was also made the emir of the then Bengal. Hundreds of his disciples in Brahmanbir entered Ahmadiyya at his hands soon after his return, and many local jamaats were established. Although Mulvi Abdul Wahid Sayyid was unable to take birth at the hands of the Promised Messiah Islam, and thus cannot be given the title of a Sahaba, yet he was the first person of the then Bengal to correspond with the Promised Messiah Islam, and thus is just as important an individual in the history of Ahmadiyya in the then Bengal now known as Bangladesh. Now I will come to the first of the two Sahabas of Bengal whose name I mentioned earlier. The name was Mulana Abdul Kabir Noor Muhammad Anha from Chittagong district. A famous Mohsin Aulia or saintly person came from Yemen and first spread Islam to this part of Bengal. Mulana Kabir Noor Sahab was an eighth generation descendant from Mohsin Aulia's nephew, Shah Sikandar, who had also come with him from Yemen. Mulana uh, Kabir Nur Sahib received his highest education from Darul Alam of India and received in-depth no religious knowledge. He was a learned alim on Islamic teachings in light of the Holy Quran and Hadith. He would counsel and advise people to turn their attention to God. People were drawn to him because of his recitation of the Holy Quran and his melodious voice. Thus he was recognized as a respectable religious character in society. He was aware of the fact that Mujadid appeared at the turn of every century. So when he heard that Hazrat Masih al Islam claimed to be the Mujadid who was to appear at the beginning of the 14th century, he started to think deeply and seek guidance through prayers and look how miraculously his prayers were answered. For he, was, he, was, he left the Bengal and went to Rangoon in Myanmar or Burma. And there he started a trading business. But, but his health uh, deteriorated and on the advice of a doctor, he was told to go to Uttar Pradesh in northern India. Uh, on his way to 
Uttar Pradesh, he stopped in Delhi for some time. The promised Messiah, Imam Mahdi, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiyan was also at Delhi at that time. There was a strong opposition of the mullahs. The edicts of the mullahs against the promised Messiah were published in the papers. Mulana Sahib became sad and thought that if someone claims to be a messenger of God and the leader of the spiritual world, then his claim should be examined under the light of the Holy Quran and Hadith. He felt that the mullahs were doing excess, which is against the norm of peaceful Islamic teachings. He felt that he should visit the promised Messiah and go and check for himself. When he arrived in Qadian and came across Hazrat Mr. Ghulam Ahmed's illuminated countenance, his heart bore witness that this was not the face of a liar. He then exchanged some thoughts and views with him, and thereafter, being fully satisfied from all angles, he immediately took bath at the promised Messiah's hands. The, the year of bath is not exactly known, but it is thought to be in the latter part of 1905. After some time, Mulana Kabir Nur Sahib returned to his home in Chittagong and engaged himself in Tabligh like a full-fledged soldier. He was the only Ahmadi in the whole of Eastern Bengal at that time. He conducted lots of meetings and spread the news of the advent of the Promised Messiah Immediately, opposition cropped up. Mullahs started agitating against him and tried to stop him in many ways. But he continued to do Tabligh resolutely and with a lot of debates with the Alamas. He would always fervently pray to Allah Almighty for guidance. He also regularly wrote to the Prophet Messiah describing the tortures inflicted upon him and requested prayers for, for, for him. His letters and reports describing the oppositions were published in the Badr newspaper in Qadian in 1907. Nobody was there in Bengal with whom he could share his grief and affliction. Mawlana Kabinur Muhammad Sahib used to explain the death of Hasrat Isa elaborately. He wrote a book named Wafat Masi Maruf or Zulfikar Ali. After its publish, he became after its publication, he became famous in the locality uh, by the name of Isa Mara Mulvi, which translates into the Mulvi who killed Isa. Very sadly, he would often tell his relatives, "O oh, my kith and kin, O oh, villagers, even after even after I explained so much to you." None of you accepted the truth. None of you had the good fortune of becoming a, a walker of Siratul Mustaqim. But remember this, Ahmadiyat is Allah's established Jamaat. Its claim is that its truth is as clear as daylight and that, and that Ahmadiyat will be victorious all over the world. After my death, members of the Ahmadiyat Jamaat from far off places will come to my grave, behave well with them. Moving on to Hazrat Rezidin Khan Sahib, who is the second Sahib of Bengal. He's from the village of Najagan of Kishaganj district. He was blessed with the opportunity to visit Qadian in 1906 and took bayat at the hand of Hazrat uh, Promised Messiah and became a Sahaba. His father's name was Nazimuddin Khan. Nazimuddin Khan Sahib was a pious and respected citizen. He gave the highest edu religious education to his children in their early days. It is said that Raisin Khan Sahib studied in Maiman Singh and Kolkata. In those days, educating boys, especially Muslim boys, was rare. The alim and the ulama had given the edict that learning English was wrong and against the sharia. As a result, Muslim boys and girls did not go to school in, uh, to study. In such a st situation, the schooling of Raisin Khan Sahib lighted up Nijagon. He became well known for having an excellent character and being a pious man. All his relatives were proud of him and wished and prayed for him. After finishing his education, he joined the postal department and after working in different locations, was also posted in Myanmar or Burma as a postmaster. After the, day, after the day's work, his interests were only in worship. He would be busy with fasting, prayers, and religious programs. Since childhood, Rezidin Khan Sahib was interested in reading books. He knew Bangla. English, Urdu, and Persian language. So he would read religious books and papers in different languages. He would be busy reading and researching the Holy Quran and Hadith for gaining knowledge and proficiency in Islamic literature. It was then that he came to know from an Urdu newspaper that a man of Qadian, of Punjab, claimed to be Imam Mehdi, and that he was a liar according to the alim and ulama of the society. 
This raised an interest in him to find out the truth because the Holy Quran and the Hadith have prophesied about the advent of the Hazrat Imam Mahdi at the beginning of the 14th century. Thus the claim had to be checked studying Islamic literature. However, Rasidin Khan Sahib was at a loss. He had no clue as how he was going to do so. So he continued to pray. Look how, how gloriously the prayers are answered by the unseen God. One day during Jumma in the, the, the town of Magui in, Ma, in Myanmar where Rasidin Khan Sahib was posted, two people came, in from, came into the mosque from the Punjab. One was a member of the armed forces, the other was an employee of the postal department. After, Jumma, after the Jummah prayers, the two visitors wanted to speak to the devotees in the mosque about the truth and advent of the Imam Mahdi and distribute books and leaflets. At the beginning of those speech, those in the mosque became agitated and insulted the two guests and forced them out of the mosque. Seeing this, Rasidin Khan Sahib became very upset. He knew, what, knew that the members of the mosque did not act according to the teachings of Islam. Khan Sahib, according to the teacher of Islam, spoke quite, uh, politely to the two guests and invited them to his house. Thus, the two Sahabas went to Khan Sahib's house. For a long time, they intensely discussed the truth of Hazrat uh, Masim al Islam. Khan Sahib, being a very pious man, immediately saw an, the undeniably clear signs of logic and the blessed of the blessings of the Almighty. Before the two men left, they presented him an Urdu book of the Jamaat named Asle Musafa. After being introduced to the Dajjal while reading the book, he ultimately accepted the truth of Ahmadiyyat. His heart wanted to go to Qadiyan and accept the bayat at the hands of the Messiah. So he took leave and came to his home in Najagan and told his elder brother the glad tidings of the advent of the Imam Mahdi Islam, and requested him to accompany him to Qadiyan. His elder brother was also amazed after listening to the manifestation of God's signs. However, due to his poor health, could not accompany him. Raisin Khan Sahib set out for Qadian alone. He went to Batala by train and then rode uh, by horse to Qadian. When he re reached Qadian and met Hazrat Masimad al-Islam, he was astonished by the countenance of his holy face and by hearing his pleasant voice. He was even more amazed when the Promised Messiah al showed concern whether he had gotten hurt on his way, from Kadi, on his way to Qadian. He took bayat at the Promised Messiah's hands and stayed in Qadian for 15 days. Within this time, he learned many things from the Promised Messiah and many of the, the other Sahabas. He also became a great, great soldier for Tabligh, gaining knowledge of the Holy Quran and Ahadith. He returned to Myanmar and went back to his previous work routine. In 1910, Hazrat Khan, uh, uh, Hazrat, uh, Resident Khan Sahib's elder brother passed away, and his mother r requested that she, he should return to Bengal. He did so after taking a year's leave, uh, but when it was time for him to return, his mother uh, reminded him that it was a greater duty of him, his to serve his parents, as that was what had been pointed out in the Quran and Hadith. And as, a, as an obedient son, he did so. He lived in his home to serve his aged mother, but along with this opportunity to serve his mother, Allah the Almighty also provided him the opportunity to show the lost Muslims of Bengal the right path through Tabligh. When Rasiuddin Khan Sahib took bayat, there was only one other Ahmadi in the whole of Bengal, and that was Mulana Kabir Nur Sahib that I've already mentioned. However, the two of them never met. The second Ahmadi was Hazrat Rasiuddin Khan Sahib himself, and the third was his wife, Hazrat Azizat un and Sahiba of the Sayyid family. From late November uh, uh, 1912, uh, Mulana Abdul Wahid Sahab, the, the person who wrote the letters to the Promised Messiah Islam, uh, started taking baths in Brahman Birya. The Anjuman Ahmadiyyat was first established in Bengal in the presence of Mufti Muhammad Sadiq Sahab in Brahman Birya. All those people in various parts of Bengal to whom Khan Sahib had done tabligh all entered the fold of Ahmadiyyat. And Mulana Sahib Abdul Wahid uh, became the president. Rasidin Khan Sahib continued to do tabligh and held many debate sessions in his own home. These sessions were attended by many Mulvis, however they eventually became greatly aggravated to the point that they filed a case against him at the local police station 
stating that he held anti-government sessions at his home. The local police inspector went over to ask residents of whether the complaints were true. He said that he had only tried to prove the truth of Ahmadiyyat and Hazrat Masimad al-Islam's claim in the meeting he held at his place. He never gave any anti-government speeches. When the inspector said he saw he could not find any witnesses who could testify that Khan Sahib was lying, he realized that he was speaking the truth and wrote in his investigation that the villagers had a disagreement on religious matters. Khan Sahib passed away at midnight of September 1921 at the age of 56 or 58. Before his death, he told his wife that he should be buried in front of his house so that in the future people can come from very far off places to visit his grave. Presently, the graveyard remains well preserved. <laughs>